Alec Bussey from thehoosier.com with us right now. There's not a lot going on, but there's a lot going on. Most of that is behind the scenes, Alec, which I think Indiana has finally gotten a little smarter in letting a little bit less information out. Although yesterday, we I do know that there was a, um, a recruit on campus. Uh, but once again, this is, is – Pretty much like Jalen Deloche, uh, another six nine uh, guy that that can help with rebounding and whatnot. But when you're when you have three open spots and you have a desperate need for a couple of shooters, potentially a backup guard, uh, I'm shocked that they would. I shouldn't say shocked. Uh, you, you can always use one more big. I will say that. Uh, three that are playing if all three are playing that's great and, and but it's it's it seems a little ironic that the next guy they're talking to is another six nine guy yeah obviously speaking about miami florida transfer anthony walker who took a visit to indiana yesterday um, was on campus yesterday we were able to confirm at the hoosier i don't know if that visit is extending to today i would imagine it is um he obviously played a ton for indiana but wasn't super productive in his four years there. His best season was his sophomore for, year. For, for Miami, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His best season and, was and, his... and ironically, he played against Indiana in the in the in the uh, NCAA this past season. So maybe he really caught Mike Woodson's eye in that game. Um, I need to go look at his game log to see what he did against the Hoosiers in the round of thirty two. Uh, but in thirty seven games this past season for Miami, um, he averaged less than three points and less than one and a half rebounds a game. His best year was as a sophomore. Um, that was two years ago when he scored um, about nine and a half, 10 points a game. Um, and he started 16 games for that Miami team in 20, maybe uh, the 2020, 2021 season, I believe. Um, and he's also not a shooter at all. Like he has never proven to be a shooter on volume or anything. So I think this would be an ad for Indiana that would essentially be designed primarily for, Depth in the front court, I don't think it necessarily fills a major need in terms of what makes them better by adding him. I don't necessarily know. Like, he's going to be behind Malik Renu. He's going to be behind Peyton Sparks. He's going to be behind Khalil Ware um, in the front court. Now, he's a good athlete, good shot blocker, good length. All those things are nice tools to have, but he certainly doesn't fit the need that they have um, in the transfer portal with their three remaining scholarships of shooters and floor spacers and guys who can play in the backcourt because right now I still think that they only have two proven guards and one of them is someone who averages less than four or five points a game in Trey Galloway and that's not to take anything away from Trey Galloway he fits a very yep. important role for Indiana but absolutely um, but he's a role but that's but that's the point he's a role player yes and that's exactly what he is he is not a starter um, and I, I know he's a great kid and I know he's got a lot of fans and I don't, again, I also am not meaning anything negative about Trey Galloway, but he's not a starter. And if he's starting for you, then you're not where you need to be talent wise. Uh, more Anthony Walker, like, uh, Alex said, um, uh, he played in a ton of games. One of the things he brings, he's 22 years old. He's he's he, so he's he's a veteran. He's, he's experienced. He's got NCAA tournament experience. He played in the Final Four. Uh, he played in all their in thirty seven games. So he's got a, a, a lot of experience. He brings that. He brings uh, Indiana needs is going to need leadership next year. And it and it, and it really sucks for a program to have to import leadership. You have to grow leadership. That's that that is a problem for a program when you have a team that does not have leadership from within. And this is going to be not a rudderless team, but you've got Xavier Johnson, but he's the lone guy and you know Xavier has 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 definitely hit the guardrails so to speak on certain things. Um and I'm sure he's learned a lot of lessons, but you don't want just one guy. Uh, you want 
a, a couple, two, three. Uh, and, and of course, college basketball is is going away from that because the elite are freshmen and sophomores. You look at the draft we've talked about, the top 20 picks in the draft are looked at to be freshmen, um, and the sophomores are right behind him. You don't have a lot of great older players because if they were great, they would have been gone. It's But Indiana has to – Trey Galloway is going to have to step up as a leader, maybe more so than as a player next year, or as much as a player. His, his leadership skills have to match a rise, and his, his play has to rise as well. But then we also have to look at C.J. Gunn, Caleb Banks. Indiana has to expect and count on improvement from those players, Alec. Yeah, you talk about the leadership. And getting Xavier Johnson back is obviously massive for this team on the court and production-wise and giving them a lead guard. And I think he gives them an identity offensively and what they're going to try and do. But I think off the court, in terms of intangibles, in terms of leadership, in terms of all of those things, like that might be his biggest value in returning to Indiana next season. Because, like you mentioned, they lose so many guys. They lose four or five guys who I think carried a lot of weight in that locker room, in that program, from a leadership perspective. Obviously, Trace Jackson Davis is gone. Race Thompson is gone. Like, find me two players who meant more to a program um than those two guys did for indiana last season I, it, it's hard to do um and i even think you can throw miller cop into that conversation i know he was only at indiana for two years but he really endeared himself to the fan base iu fans love miller cop whether it's all the funny things on social media that he posts his funny tiktoks um interacting with fans on social media in various ways um i think miller cop brought a leadership aspect that maybe wasn't always talked about and then I even think Jalen Hutchinson had qual- qualities of a good leader last year for Indiana, uh, especially on the court. He never seemed to get overwhelmed by the moment. He never seemed to um, stress in high pressure situations. And I think that's rare for a freshman guard. And I don't know if you can expect that from Gabe Cops coming in next season. So I do think that the return of Xavier Johnson gives them a leader. Now, obviously you mentioned some of the issues in the past with that and, Obviously, some off-the-court things that we don't need to dive into too much because it's not necessary. Uh, We know that history. But Xavier Johnson's older. He's going to have a lot of responsibility. I wrote yesterday on the website that I think he can potentially be this team's leading scorer next season because Trey Jackson Davis is gone. Um, We've seen him score in the past in his career. Johnson score upwards of 12 to 15 points at different times. He hasn't done that at Indiana, but he was also playing with an All-American. So I would expect Xavier Johnson to see his scoring numbers increase, to see his shot share increase, and it's about him finding ways to be efficient in that, which is something that we know he started to do at a higher level than he did when he was at Pitt his first three years of college. So now it comes into, can you carry that over to Indiana on higher volume with your shots? And, um, I am excited to see what Xavier Johnson can do for Indiana because I think his return is very important. And your point guard point guard has to be your quarterback. And if you're the quarterback, you're a de facto leader on that team because all four guys that are on the court should always, always be looking towards you for the ball, for the play, for the offense for the set, whatever. And if you're being looked at that much, you also have to be a leader, in my opinion. You you have to be uh, talkative. You don't have to be, you know, demonstrative, but you you have to be talking. You have to be a communicator. You have to be a leader. A point guard has to be a leader on the floor, period. Um, it'd be nice if you had more. Like I said, uh, like like last year, you have Trace Jackson Davis and – at one point, they early on had Xavier Johnson. They ended up losing that, but you pointed out that Jalen Huchifino settled in nicely. It took him a bit, but he settled into that role. And just his play a lot of times was good leadership by just keeping things calm. Uh, Indiana's going to have to have that. They, unfortunately, they get that back with Xavier Johnson, but you also need a backup point guard. 
And you cannot have a drop that goes from one to, to three or four. You can't have that much of a disparity. Of course, right now, a backup point guard is going to be a freshman. There's no leadership there. And you, you wonder what, what play would be like. Uh, you know, who's going to be the backup point guard for Indiana? Uh, I, I don't think – Gabe Cops is – he's more of a shooter. He's more of a two, isn't he? Yeah, he has the ability to play some point guard. I would describe him as a combo guard. I do think that Indiana will go find another point guard. Um, but I could be wrong. Maybe Mike Woodson feels confident in Trey Galloway to be the backup point guard, considering he had to do it for so much last season. Uh, I would not Indiana- be surprised. But what do you? But if that's the case, again, I go back to, is Indiana good enough? At, if Trey Galloway is running the point, is Indiana good enough? Is that a good enough team? For what? To to be to be among the elite. Not, not not as a starter, but I mean if if I still feel I think your backup has to be better than that. I think your backup has to be a, as good as possible. He should he should be fighting your starting point guard for minutes. Um it's how I view it. Yeah, I mean like I don't think that I look at this Indiana team and the roster that it currently is and the roster that it maybe projects to be um, as a team that is going to compete for a Big Ten title um, currently and less guys really develop and less guys really progress in their careers and reach their talent level, right? Like there's a possibility that they're starting two former five stars with Khalil Ware and Malik Renew, right? And that's awesome. Like talent talent acquisition is – in my opinion, a college coach's biggest job at football or basketball. Like the the number one job of a coach, in my opinion, is to recruit. Now, that being said, like it's also recruiting kids who fit and kids who are gonna elevate your program. And there's certainly a potential for both Malik Renu and Khalil Ware to do that. I just question like because we haven't seen them do it at a high level at the college level in the Pac Pac 12 or in the Big Ten, that it's going to just happen magically for both of those players next season. I do expect them both to take a step next season, but I don't think I expect either one of them to be, you know, in all Big Ten first-team selection next season based off of what they've shown. Is the talent there? Absolutely. That That's undeniable. But it's hard to project that. Um, so if Indiana is going to be one of the best teams in the Big Ten – they're going to need those two players to really take a step, and they're going to need Xavier Johnson to be the type of player that he was at the last month or so stretch of the 2022 season when he was averaging like 16-ish points a game, was making over 40% of his threes, was dishing out over six assists a game. Um, he was the biggest reason, in my opinion, that Indiana kind of went on that run at the end of the 2022 season, which led to them um, getting into the NCAA tournament after beating Illinois, beating Michigan in the Big Ten tournament, um, all that happens before they lose um, in the round of 64. I think that there's potential for this team to be pretty good next season, to be someone who is playing in the NCAA tournament again. Um, but in terms of being elite, like I don't project this to be a top 15, top 10 team next season right now, the way it currently stands. But there's not very many teams in the Big Ten that I would project to be that right now. So uh, I think they're in a pack of, a lot of teams in the Big Ten who are kind of like right in the middle, right in the pack of fighting for an NCAA tournament bid, just kind of like a lot of teams were last year. 